we're back here in my own game development project uh, for a gameplay ability system demonstration tutorial whatever you want to call it so i want to talk about clamping your attributes because if you've been working with the gameplay ability system you'll probably have something like a default attributes table and in that we can give in a minimum value and a maximum value if you've seen my gameplay ability introductory course you will know that these don't actually do anything uh, for some reason i do have like value set to some of them uh, ignore that because they don't do anything Epic straight up just has not yet implemented any functionality uh, for these things. These values only actually exist in the data table row struct. They don't even exist within the attributes themselves. And trying to add them into the attributes yourselves uh, is a little bit of a nightmare. So generally speaking, what most people tend to do is just make two separate attributes if you need to have a max health or a max mana in my case i also have a max defense because defense is a resource that enemies uh, can spend in my game but still the question remains then how do we clamp this because you can very much in your gameplay ability or even in your gameplay effect calculation do some very weird code to only add as much health uh, in a healing spell as there is room on your target to heal so that you don't overheal you can make an entire execution calculation which is a little bit overkill that does all this and in general what you should do is you should just clamp this in the attribute set itself so i'm going to show you a little bit of code uh, on my end on how i did that so i have this base attribute set right that has the health and the max health because everything in my game needs health and max health then other attribute sets will inherit off of this one instead of just the basic one the attribute set class itself has this function called pre-attribute change so that's a virtual void pre-attribute change with a parameter for a const gameplay attribute reference which we call attributes and a float reference for the new value so this is just a little bit of code that runs that lets you adjust the new value that your attribute is going to be set to before it actually sets it to that new value so let's open up that function itself and here we can see i can check if the attribute that we're going to be changing is the same as our health attribute which we have uh, this function due to having these like accessor definitions uh, for these macros up here which is just a little bit of boilerplate code that again if you've watched my gameplay ability series you'll be familiar with so we check if the attribute that we're going to be changing is the help attribute and if so we just set the new value which is a reference so we're actually like changing the actual value that we're going to be working with with a clamp and we just clamp it between zero and the max health attribute that we have and then we just call the uh, pre-attribute change parent function and we pass through the attribute and the now newly changed new value and then it will only set it to ever be a max health and if for any reason you're worried about it getting below a value of zero for the most part you shouldn't really have this issue pop up because if it is talking about health, when you go beyond zero, you probably just destroy the actor to begin with. So usually not an issue. And if it's something like mana, your abilities probably should be using the built-in gameplay effect cost system. Which just won't allow you to use an ability if you don't have the appropriate attributes to use it. So those won't ever go below zero. Still, it is good to just, if you're going to be doing this clamping anyway, uh, clamp it to zero as well as a minimum value. And now if I go into my uh, gameplay effects and I just make a quick uh, gameplay effect, like something uh, called player heal, for instance, I don't have to worry about anything uh, other than just going in here and saying, hey, modifiers, we're going to be modifying the health the operation will be adding to the base and then the magnitude calculation uh, what i usually end up doing is i use a curve table and i have this generic curve table here uh, which just has a linear input the reason that i do that is because this makes it super easy uh, to give in a value because we just have a table that takes in the level of the gameplay effect 
and just converts that level one to one to the actual amount of HP that I'm going to be healing. So if in some gameplay uh, ability, like here my uh, player healing ability, uh, for this one I actually just always set it to max HP, but if instead, let's say, we use our new player heal, I can now just give in uh, the gameplay level, and that'll be the amount of HP that I heal. And if that makes me go over, that's entirely okay, because the attribute set itself is clamping the max possible value. So that's just a quick little thing that I wanted to show off, I wanted to talk about, because I don't think I really like, covered this in depth too much in the actual gameplay ability course that I made. So just a little bit of a follow-up, uh, which I every so often get some questions about. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 